Okay, welcome back to the quest for details. So we are heading to the East Bay, the Northeast Bay of the San Francisco Bay, and detect around because you never know what was where and what is now. Does that make sense? Okay. I'll show you where we end up first. You've arrived. Okay, we are out at uh, Lake Herman on Lake Herman Road, east of Vallejo, and what I see instantly is palm trees and other large trees, so it's probably an old farmhouse conversion, and it's beautiful. So we're going to go wander around and see if there's modern, old, what's going on. So, getting uh, modern signals, worked my way over towards this house, but I think it might have modern tenants in it. And uh, just kind of doing the edges, and we'll go back and do the central green, and then move on and see what we see. Okay, we're heading off down the road. Um, everything there that looked old seemed like it was probably protected and historic and stuff. So we're going to go down to uh, the shorelines. There's some public parks and stuff built along the shorelines of, uh, of Old Venetia. And I think that, uh, you know, there could be some good serendipity there. We are entering a zone that is, uh, you know, the East Bay's refinery zone. There's a few different large oil refineries here. We have the deep water port where the large tanker ships can come in and we actually boil down all of the oil here and turn it into the fossil fuels and ship it out to the rest of the country. This is one of the refining ports. Well, I was driving to our next spot out by the water and I saw this little park and there's actually some older houses and the rest of it's not too it's all uh it's all built up but i think we'll just do underneath these trees and see what we get i'll show you anything old i was hitting on the surface it's our first quarter of the day and the nickel okay where we are this is the little waterfront of Phoenicia. it's very historic though and there's the Carquina Straits, so the entire Sacramento River, Yuba River, and American Rivers all drain down into that little gap right there. That's the Carquinas Bridge, and then the greater San Francisco Bay out beyond, which expands into a big old bay. We are inland of that, and then the Pacific Ocean, way farther out. But this is the Carquina Straits. And we're going to go down to this little shore here and do some detecting. Well, it is an awesome day. I mean, it's almost, it's like 80 degrees, so it's 90 degrees here in this little spot. And it's a tight little beach, and the tide's pretty far in, but there are people swimming and hanging out. I'm not doing a lot of filming, but there's a, a lot of signals compared to the size of some beaches, so... And there's a park up above, and uh, yeah, and we're using the CKG scoop. And there's actual sand and shells and stuff, so one of these rare spots inside the bay where you can use the scoop. And a bay is so glassy that you can see reflections on it. We got what said it was a 55 in the scoop. Could be anything. And it's a pop top. Okay. We have worked our way to this far end of the beach and as the tide goes out there's this little line and we are trapped in between uh, the bedrock and the sands in this wall. 
so it's not super hard hunting. Getting little pieces of melted lead, but we are by the water, so I'm going to run out of beach here, but I'm still going to detect around the cracks a little bit. It's a good spot. There's a uh, little crevices where things are getting stuck. Little pieces of lead. You can eyeball little bullets, but that means that the heavies are here. Really some uh, cool little rocks here. A lot of limestone, but very uh, bubbly stuff. And then I think I see a little chunk of chalcedony right there. Not bad. Also, all along the top of this, which is basically sedimentary layers, right about there and then it gets deeper and deeper is this layer after layer of shells and they're uh, pretty thick layers going this way and that way and here in the Bay Area we have uh, you can see these flat bays on a point looking out into here and uh, so there was lots of shellfish there still is but there would have been even more back in the day and that's what the native people uh, sustain themselves on around here often and so they would build up um, huge piles over the years and we actually have a couple of historic shell mounds that were preserved most of them were used for fertilizers different things are just built on top of because of how it developed the East Bay is farther down this way but Oakland has and Berkeley have their famous shell mound areas I think this is probably another one I don't think that they're laid in uh, beds that have been up uplifted geologically. I think that they're probably the spoils of human activity on the bluff above here eating and piling and wading out here and where the rocks are denuded and don't have much uh, wildlife now back in those days it would have been covered in shellfish and abalone and oysters and, and that's what you see in those layers. I'll show you. See these are the layers that I was actually telling you about here. There's stripes of strata. You can see them, the changes in color there. And the reason why they're showing here is because everybody's climbed up and down for access. But you got some original clay sand layers, and that's a pretty big block. And then on top of it, you have this, which is just all, oh, looks like a lot of oysters mostly, little oysters real distinct lines in between the whole deal. Oysters, oysters, so those are just layers and I thought that was cool though. Very thick layers. Oh, that's a cute little fossil. See all the little shells stuck in there? So that's actually, you know, millions of years old in theory to be stuck in rock. We're just exploring around. This is actually the next point up. But this is a 
a shipyard that was finished existing in 190 something so that was the end of its days and it had been around for a while it says it can only be seen at low tide so here you probably have logs and stuff that were milled down in the old days to uh, to make the docks and the, this actually the slant of it and the angle going off there it said it was a shipyard so this is probably actually one of the spots where you where you slid them out maybe because of, of the angle you know like a boat ramp basically and you can see a little breakwater made out of cement and then that's a natural little sandstone knob we'll just walk over here because because we're almost done the metal detector is put away because I don't tend to hunt after dark um, in this general area. There's some cool swirls in the rock, huh? It's sandstone, but uh, when the sediment was getting laid down, it got all swirly. Let's see where those ducks are standing. There's actually rope anchor is still buried into the sandstone out there. You can see this is probably another working area. This is all pretty muddy out here. I don't think I'm going to walk too far out. Except to show you that there's more works that went on there. And if you look on Google Earth, you can see underwater. There's structure that goes out, old pilings. Matthew Turner was born in Geneva, Ohio on June 17, 1825. In 1849, he heard about gold mining in California and set off for the West Coast in 1850. He spent about three years mining gold in Calaveras County and was quite successful. Turner decided to move into shipbuilding, setting up a yard near Hunter's Point with his brother Horatio the success of his first shipyard led him to search for another location. He went into business with his brother and John Eckley, forming the Matthew Turner Shipyard at Benicia in 1883. This yard constructed at least 154 wooden hold ships. So we're kind of under an old pier. Oh, and I know what this is. This is iron slag. So, wow, that's leftover slag from uh, iron works. Oh, and a lead something. You can tell it crimped over something. Pieces of metal everywhere. See them? Washers. I like the slag. It's another piece of metal. We'll just make a little pile of this stuff. See, there's some glassier looking stuff, but this is the heavy metalish looking stuff and I've seen it where they uh, used it along the railroads to line the tracks like gravel pretty cool I think we're just going to finish out with some real mellow mud marking here some of the square nails from it I'll make a little pile of that and stuff, and we'll leave it here. But, no harm in looking. These are all bolts from it. Here's a little brass nail. That's pretty cool. So yeah, if you detect it here, Probably go crazy. Could 
Bin Laden coins lost in an old shipyard. The houses now are built right up. We're actually right below our chat houses. But yeah, look. More little. These are all little brass nails from ships and rivets. That is pretty cool. Pretty cool. And then the rest are square nails and slag. Molten slag. So I imagine that means that they were producing their own iron products here. Look how green all, the, all that is. Well, we have a spot to come randomly go through when the uh, sun is out again. And the tides are low. And we happen to be in this area. It's a sweet little spot. This would just be fun to see how many little details we could pull out of it. what the little pieces of iron were. Pieces of making ships. So we just want to wander along the edge of the gravel here. This is the top of treasure chests, which is wooden boards. <laughs> Looks like wooden boards. You can see there's more structures and then using the rocks wherever they could. Pretty cool. There's a little uh, piece of some pretty thick pottery. Taking out of the mud. I like the super little details. The little brass things. There's little pieces of lead everywhere. Stuck in all the cracks. The light is really getting poor. This one has to be pretty obvious for us to spot at this point. But it was a poor end of the day discovery. There's a palm trees and brickwork and stuff over here. One pint. So many spots here. Where, uh, where stuff is sticking out of the ground. Guys, coming over here to look at this. In the last rays of light, so we're kind of hurrying by a billion details. There's people right up above in their homes, so. We're just gonna drop it over here. These might actually be homes too. Hello? Yeah, it looks like they are. Just filming the cool thing. I don't know if these are part of uh, the earlier stuff or I mean, the whole waterfront here was used. Here's the next one. These might have been like the main sewer outs or something, you know? And then off to some real tight right under people's decks. So we're gonna go back. But yeah, century plants, palm trees. You know, cool little spot there. Mm. Man. 
still smells like the sewer main. Yeah, these are all century plants. That one bloomed. People think that it takes them a hundred years to bloom, but it doesn't. It takes ten. Those are all oh, agaves, basically. So tequila and rope, some of the world's finest rope. And, uh, yeah, they bloom. It's about every ten years. But it was a mistranslation. They took centatamine a hundred. And so the... The myth has stuck, but you can plant a baby one and stick it in the ground and ten years later it'll be that big and blooming. And if you, you know, if you're a gardener and you, you have them around and you know. They're one of those tricky plants because they have pups that are growing up next to them and if you're not paying attention to them then you'll think it's the same one forever in the same spot. <sighs> that side of the bay right here is basically low habitation and then you have Crockett and yeah let's go it's after dark and we are below the old these are all almond trees that are blooming so almonds have a tendency of going going wild and they have okay so we'll leave our little pile of relics here. And I'm going to head on down the road because it's nightfall. So, thank you for joining me on another one. Do we have any light? We do. Good night, you guys. Um, treasure is definitely uh, where you find it and what you make of it. So, Look at that. We'll see you next time, somewhere else. Quest on.